Here's an example about standard deviation, and in particular calculating it by hand, and also thinking about a little bit about the intuition of how standard deviation is a measure of spread. So here's what's going on. There's three versions of the problem. Um, and in each version, we've got one set of numbers, one data set, very simple numbers, and another data set. These could be, you know, these are whatever you want to think of, some sort of numerical data, quantitative data. And in each case, what we want to do is we want to look at these and as much as possible without calculation at first, figure out which one has this big, bigger standard deviation, and then actually calculate it and check our intuition. Okay, so you can pause and try to do that if you want, um, but I'll, you know, work through it. So let's look at set one. To figure out standard deviation, we need to know, first of all, at least roughly where the mean is, because it's all about how far are these numbers are away from the mean. We're basically just sort of, in a way, averaging how far they are from the mean, but in a kind of a weird way, okay? Well, the mean is not too hard to find here. In each case, these numbers are actually nicely centered on 6. This is 6 plus or minus 1, and also 6 plus or minus 3. And that's actually going to be a very good way to think about this data set. This is 6 plus or minus 2, and also 6 plus or minus 4. So the 6 is right in the middle, and what we see is that uh, if you look at the, think about the description I just said, these numbers are closer to 6 than these two numbers. And these two numbers are closer to 6 than these two numbers. Okay, so we can always, so the, and then the 6s of course are the same. So in each case, we can, for every data point here, we can find a corresponding data point here that's further away from the mean. So let's think about that. Which is, should have the bigger spread? Well, if you don't want the answer, pause the video, but this data set here is going to have the bigger spread because these two data points are two away and these are four away, whereas here they were clustered closer together. Okay. So we should, if standard deviation is any kind of decent measure of spread, this should show the higher spread. Okay, so now let's look at the calculation. So s, uh, let me put it in math mode here, s squared, which is the variance, there's a lot of terminology here, but you can bear with me, okay. That's called, that's the square of the standard deviation. It's got its own nice properties. That's the first thing you calculate. And the formula for that is it's the sum of the square deviations uh, let's put a bar over this thing from the mean. So I'm going to square those. And then I need I don't want to just take the sum of those. I want to basically take an average of the square deviations. Now there's a very funky technical reason why we actually just don't divide by how many samples there are, but by one less. Okay. That's the formula. Boy, that's not the kind of formula that we're really necessarily happy with, with this weird sigma symbol and xi's and all kinds of stuff. Okay, but I wanted to at least have the formula there. So let's look at the process. Okay, as a multi-step process, first we calculate the deviations for a set one. Okay, we know, we're pretty sure the mean is six because everything's symmetrical around six. If we wanted to, we could add up all the numbers and divide by five and we're going to see that, that the uh, mean is indeed 6. Okay, So all we do is instead of recording the numbers themselves, we just record the deviations. So 3 is minus 3 away from 6, then minus 1, then 0, then 1, then 3. All I'm doing is I'm subtracting the mean. So that's what this step is. Just take all the data values and subtract um, the mean to get the deviations. Okay. Square them to get a list of squared deviations. 9, 1, 0, 1, 9. Okay. Sum them. Okay. And so that's 9 plus 1 is 10. 9 plus 1 is 10, So 20. Okay. So that's just the sum. Let me just write it out really explicitly. Plus 0, plus 1, plus 9. Okay. That's what this is supposed to mean. It's the sum of the squared deviations. So you calculate the deviations. You square them. You sum them. And then divide by the n minus 1. Okay, and that's a little bit weird, but basically you're just saying once I've got this list of numbers, the nine one zero one nine, you're roughly taking the average of those numbers. On average, how big is this the square of the deviation from the mean? Okay, so uh, in he in this case n minus one is four, and so twenty over four is going to be five. So the standard deviation, oh, so the sorry the variance. Haha, <laughs> there's one more step. So that equals the variance. And the last step, take the square root. Why on earth take the square root? Okay, This was a formula for the s squared, 
So the S, the standard deviation, is the square root of all that stuff. Pooh, that's a fancy, big, big looking formula, OK? Various reasons, but the main reason is that whatever units these have, suppose these were like inches, like uh, flowers that I'm growing, and I'm looking at how tall they grow in, in inches. When I square, then that's this whole numerator is going to be in inches squared. And then I just divide by a number, like how many things there were for. This whole thing's going to be inches squared. I want the measure of spread to come back into the units that's, that's the same units that we started in, say inches. That's one thing the square root accomplishes. It's basically the main thing the square root accomplishes. OK, so the square root, root 5, and that is about 2.236. OK, that is the standard deviation. OK, we're done. That's the answer. So now let's look at uh, set 2. OK, so here the deviations. So again, this it's not too hard to calculate that the mean is really 6, or we you can or you might believe me this argument that everything's symmetrical around 6, so the mean's got to be 6. Okay. The set 2 deviations are going to be 2 minus 6 is minus 4, minus 2, that's 4 minus 6, 0, 2, and 4. And already we can see how this is going to go. These are bigger numbers in terms of their size, their absolute value, than these guys. And so when we square them, we'll get bigger numbers. When we sum them, we're going to get a bigger number. And when we divide by the same n minus 1, which is 4, we're going to get a bigger number. OK, so square them. We get 16, 4, 0, 4, 16. We sum them. And we get 20 plus 20 is 40. And we divide by n minus 1. And that is 40 over 4 is 10. OK, and that's the variance, or in other words, s squared. And then we take the square root to get the right units back. And we get uh, square root of 10 which is roughly 3 point something, about 3.16. OK. So this confirms our intuition that the standard deviation um, is really going to be bigger. And one interpretation of this is that if this hadn't come out bigger, we wouldn't use standard deviation. We, we wouldn't think of it as a measure of spread, because these guys really are definitely spread out further than these guys. There should, there'd be, there's no measure of spread that wouldn't give a bigger answer for the set than the set. OK. Let's look at some, let's look at some other ones. OK. 10, 14, 15, 16, 20, 10, 11, 15, 19, 20. OK, so let's see if this middle number, which is clearly the median, let's see if that's also the mean in this case. Well, this is 15, 15 plus or minus 1, uh -huh. 15 plus or minus 5. So it's symmetrical about 15, so that's going to be the mean. Again, if you want to add up all the numbers divided by 5, trust me, you'll get 15. Here, it's 15. Now, these data points are exactly the same the 15 plus or minus 5 show up. But here, you've got a 15 plus or minus 4 and a 15 plus or minus 4. Hmm. So let's see. If, the fifth, if three of the data points are the same, but then these, these two data points have been kind of shifted outward away from 15, which is going to have the higher standard deviation, which is more spread out? Think about it for a sec. Pause if you want. Uh, but I claim this is going to have the higher spread because those two data points that we're hugging the middle close to 15 have been spread apart. OK, so let's just do the calculations real quick. The deviations are minus 5, minus 1, 0, uh, 1, and 5. And so the squares are going to be 25, 1, 0, 1, 25. The sum is going to be 52. And the average. I'll put it in quotes because it's really divided by 4 again, is 52 over 4 is 13. And the square root is root 13, which is about 3.6. OK. Now let's look at set 2. Uh, the deviations are minus 5, minus 4, 0, 4, 5. It's like 11 minus 15 is minus 4, OK? And that's just a bigger list of numbers when we take the absolute values, or equivalently, basically, we're square, squaring it. So squares is 25, 16, 0, 16, 25, OK? And then the sum is going to be now 82, yep. And the average, which is really dividing by n minus 1, and again, that's one of the most technical, weird things in all of statistics. Why do you divide by n minus 1? Well, now is not the time to talk about it. 
82 over 4 is 20.5, okay? And the square root is root 20.5 is about 4.5. So indeed, it comes out having a higher um, standard deviation. Now notice, here the standard deviation went up by a factor of almost 3 halves. Um, because this was really quite a bit more spread out. The, the, the plus or minus 3 and 1 versus 4 and 2, almost everything but that one central value was spreading out. Here, a lot of the data set didn't spread out. And even though it's a fairly big jump still in the standard deviation, it's not quite as much of a ratio. It's not like a 3 to 2 ratio anymore. It's not 50% bigger uh, standard deviation. And that's because even though these two data points moved a bit, the bulk of the spread, the, you know, the the things that were really contributing the most to the sum of the squares, it was the 25s, those were the same. And yeah, the 16s came in where the ones were, so that increased it, but not absolutely drastically. Okay. One thing, as I do this, I realize, I don't want to get the, give the impression that you, if you do this by hand, you'll always have a zero in the middle. Remember, the mean doesn't have to show up as a value on the list. It just happens to be for these simple sets of numbers, the mean was one of the numbers, and so we get the zero right in between. And it's not true that you'll have the same number of numbers with negative deviation as with positive. That's exactly when the mean and the median are equal or very close to each other. Um, the mean can be skewed off from the median. And so there could be lots, maybe, on deviations on the low side and not so much on the high side or vice versa. Okay. Now let's, let's look at set one and set two. Let's not do the by hand calculation because it's getting long, I think. But let's just look at the, the um, intuitive calculation. Look at these, stare at these numbers for a minute and see if you can see what's special about the two numbers, at the two sets, as they relate to each other. Pause it if you want. Notice the 2, 6, 6, 9, 82, 86, 86, 89. Aha, uh -huh. 11, 91. Now that doesn't, well, you know, it does look similar. It's just all these numbers have, have had 80s added to them. So these numbers are just set 1 plus 80. Okay. And the question is, should that change the spread? Should a shift change the spread? Okay, We like it so that if I take a bunch of numbers and I just add the same to all of them, it's just shifting the histogram over and not going to change the shape or the spread at all. And the answer should be no. Okay, um, And indeed, that's correct. That the, media, the IQR, for example, is not changed by a shift and the standard deviation is not changed by a shift. And you can see that if you just do the first part of the um, of the by hand formula, well, let's see. Here, the mean is not quite as obvious. Okay, let's just look at the set one mean. The set one mean is two plus six plus six plus nine plus eleven plus fourteen all over. And remember, we're not redefining the notion of mean. If there's six things here, you do divide by six to calculate the mean, just in the ordinary way. Is just for the standard deviation we do something kind of weird, um, that's 8, okay? And so the deviations are going to be minus 6, minus 2, minus 2, 1, 3, 6, okay? Let's not do the rest of the calculation. Let's just look at the set 2 mean, okay? How does the mean behave when I add 80 to everything? I claim that it just increases by 80. If you don't believe me, you can do that calculation yourself. The mean there is I 88. Let's put it in math mode. Okay. So what are the deviations going to be? Okay. Instead of comparing everything to 8, I compare everything to 88. Well, what's 82 minus 8? It's minus 6. Okay. Because the mean has been shifted and the numbers have been shifted by the same amount. And then minus 2, minus 2, oops, 1, 3, 6. It's the same list. So no matter what I get as a number for a standard deviation from here, it's going to be exactly the same here. Okay. So these guys actually are going to have exactly uh, equal standard deviations. And in fact, any sensible measure of spread is going to be the same for these two sets. Okay. So hopefully that gives us a little more intuition about why this is a good measure of spread in a lot of cases, not all, um, and how to calculate it.